Welcome to Fish School Episode 1. In this series, we will be recreating Snot Farm, a face pants classic and the first game to feature the beloved Citizen, also known as Terry. As a disclaimer, Sandbox is still heavily in development, so things might be replaced or moved around. If you find out that something in the tutorial changed or is missing, make sure to read the pinned comment below or let us know in our Discord server. For the sake of keeping this video short, we'll assume that you already have a code editor installed, although it won't be necessary for the first few episodes. If you don't have one, Facepants supports Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code and Rider. C-sharp knowledge is not required, as I'll try my best to keep it simple, but preferably you understand the basics. In this episode, we'll explore the tools, the editor and how to create your first project. When booting up Sandbox on Steam, you'll be given the option to either launch it in play mode or launch the editor. If you don't see it, you can re-enable it here. Let's launch the editor and this window will appear. On the right, we have your projects and on the left, we have useful shortcuts. Click the big blue button to create a new project and give your project a name. Here you can change your project location. I suggest not selecting a different drive from your operating system or a folder that is synced with Microsoft OneDrive, as those have been known to cause some issues in the long run. Create the project and now wait for everything to compile. If this is your first ever project, it will take a long time to compile everything. It will freeze and may take up to 10 minutes, but don't worry. Every time you open your project in the future, it won't take more than 30 seconds. Here we have the default editor. Although the layout might change in the future, we have the default scene in the center with tabs to view other scenes and the game currently running. Hold the right mouse to look around and was to move inside. Shift to speed up and mouse wheel to change the camera speed. The scenes here key one for the game objects and one for the UI panels, the inspector on the right to edit components or preview assets, you can click on the lock to stop it from changing to other selections, the asset browsers, one for cloud assets and one for your local assets, you can look for files, filter, change how they are displayed and more. Our trusty console, the sounds mixer, library manager, performance, and you can edit your layout however you want. Drag these windows, delete them, add some other windows we won't look into, save your layout, or load back the default one. Let's reopen the default scene. Looking at the assets browser, you can see that a project in Sandbox has a specific layout. We have the assets folder which is where you'll have your models, sounds, materials, maps, scenes, prefabs, basically everything except code, which goes in the code folder. We won't explain the other folders for this tutorial. And now, we can finally get to the game objects and components. Game objects are the smallest common denominator in Sandbox, containing only information on their name, tags, position, rotation and scale. Components, on the other hand, give them a purpose, Render a model, create a particle, play a sound, move your character, all of these are achieved through components. Let's click on one of these cubes, you can drag these arrows to move them along the axis, switch to rotate mode, up here on the top right, or scale mode, the keybinds for them are W, E and R, on the inspector everything about the game object is displayed, its name, tags, Transform, which is the position, rotation and scale. For this cube, we have the model renderer component, currently rendering the default cube model and tinting it magenta. As you can see, it disappears when I disable it. For component editing, you have the classic right click, collapse, etc, etc. Next up, we have the box collider component, which creates a solid box, 50 units wide, 50 units long and 50 units tall. Then there's the rigid body component, which enables physics simulation on the cube. To show off the results, let's drag up these cubes and remove the rigid body for one of them. When we go to the top to start our scene with the play button, the two cubes with the rigid body component will fall while the other stands still. In fact, 
if you look at this green plane, it's also a game object with the model renderer displaying the plane model, tinting it green, and only a box collider without the rigid body. This is useful for maps, building rocks, anything that doesn't need to be simulated. Stop the simulation, save the scene with Ctrl S, it's good to save it once in a while. Looking at the other game objects, we have the camera, one of the presets you can create. It contains the camera component and some other components for post-processing. It also has a useful preview, which helps you look at the changes you make. There's a few other game objects we could look at, but we'll show them off when we start making our own levels for the game. This ends the first episode. Let's delete the cubes, because next episode we'll be looking into making our own player. Thank you for watching, and do check out our Discord server in the description, where you can ask for help in our dedicated channel, get notified on new releases, or even tell us what to cover next.